Okay, I think we can start now. Uh, I think uh, all of you know uh, what Java is. You learned Java here. And uh, by the way, uh, who uh, who has encountered Kotlin up to date? So who knows what Kotlin is? So only only okay. So it will be your first your first encounter with Kotlin, and uh, I believe that after this lecture you will like it and uh, maybe you will want to learn more about this language. So it's a separate language, of course. And uh, I hope that you uh, uh, at least know something about generics in Java. I hope, uh, yeah, you do, because uh, it's a sort of prerequisite to better understand my lecture. But in case somebody still need a reminder, I will just quickly, quickly show a couple of slides that, uh, like, uh, before, before the appearance of generics, we uh, had this, uh, say, list class that only can contain objects of any type, and if it contains objects of any type, it just don't, uh, it doesn't understand what type of object it contains. So you can add, uh, say, managers, you can add different other employees to this list. Uh, but when you are getting elements from this list, it only knows that they are objects, so we need to typecast them uh, explicitly. And at this point, uh, an exception might occur, because at this, at this stage, we added an element of the wrong type here. So this is how it worked before generics. And uh, now, yeah, and this is, by, by the way, my favorite picture about uh, compile time uh, safety and uh, runtime safety. Because in languages like JavaScript or Python, they say, oh, it doesn't matter, you, we will sort it out in runtime. We can add a everything to any list, to any map, and then we will just, uh, in uh, runtime, we'll see if it works uh, or not. <laughs> so uh, this, is, uh, this is the difference. Okay, and how it works in typed languages like Java and Kotlin. In Java and Kotlin we have generics and uh, it works pretty simple. Uh, we have this manager in triangle brackets here. So we say that we it's not a list, it's a list of managers. And uh, it won't allow us to, to compile this line of code because compiler will say, hey, hey, you want list only of managers and you are add adding not a manager but uh, cleaner or whatever so uh, this will get rid us of some bugs in code but actually I believe that you already know all this stuff or you just have some idea of this stuff and uh, what I'm going to talk about is some advanced things uh, called type variants and uh, yeah, there are actually three types of variants, invariants, covariants, and contravariants. And I, I don't know uh, how deep uh, are you learning mathematics here in, in minor, but uh, I do believe that uh, many people, many programmers have dreadful flashbacks from some math classes about these uh, awful uh, terms because we have terms uh, like covariance and contravariance in linear algebra. We have uh, these terms also in category theory. Uh, well, in theoretical th physics also. So it looks like rocket science, very complicated terms. And uh, mm, it's a pity because uh, even uh, I think it averts people from learning this stuff um, in regards to programming languages. So, and in my experience, even, even experienced uh, Java developers and Kotlin developers sometimes fail to understand variants, but uh, this leads to problems that internal APIs of the programs, they uh, are written very poorly because of this, because people either not using generics or use them wrong, in the wrong way. So, uh, it's all about writing better APIs, better uh, uh, better interfaces that other programmers will use uh, while developing your program. So if 
we can um, just think of API as a foundation of the building and the implementation, the, the things that you are writing inside this API mm -hmm. is like the building itself. So if we have good foundation, the code is more maintainable. So uh, today we will not talk about this ifs and thens mm -hmm. and algorithms. We will talk only about interfaces. So yeah, please note this. And uh, I'm going to explain uh, this stuff from evolutionary perspective. Uh, because uh, yeah, starting from some very ancient fossilized stuff like uh, uh, Java type arrays and then going through uh, Java to Kotlin. So that's, this is how actually this stuff evolved because uh, uh, typed, uh, typed arrays, they appeared 25 years ago in Java, 26 years ago. And uh, then came in the early uh, 2000, uh, 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 in the early 2000s, yeah, uh, they appeared Java generics, and then Kotlin appeared, and it also has its own generics, but it's very difficult to understand Kotlin generics without understanding the full, uh, the full evolution. I think on this picture, uh, this guy is Java, of course, huge and very ancient. I don't, don't know who is Kotlin, maybe maybe this one, because <laughs> it's still far from perfect. You you will see. <laughs> yeah, and throughout uh, throughout my lecture, I will use the 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 same example of class hierarchy. Just uh, look at it and remember, it will be always the same. Always. Uh, uh, the same three classes like person, employee, and manager. And see, uh, this is hierarchy. So uh, each manager is an employee, each employee is a person, each manager is a person, but not necessarily vice versa. I can imagine a person who is not employee, an employee who is not a manager. So this will be the same example throughout the lecture. So just please remember and yeah, keep it in mind. And also, I will ask a lot of questions, and it will be like sort of who wants to be a millionaire? Only four possible, only four answers are possible. Like uh, I will ask you what's going to happen, and uh, there will be only one of four outcomes. The code won't compile. Yeah, and there will be icons, specific icons for this one or emojis. Uh, the code won't compile. The code will compile and run, but uh, in runtime we'll have an exception. Uh, green check mark, all good. The code compiles, runs, and everything's perfect. It runs and is standard. And this biohazard sign uh, means that something dreadful happened. That code will compile, it will run, but it spoils uh, heap, it spoils memory. Uh, in, Java and, uh, in Java language specification, this situation is called heap pollution. And this means that we have a variable of some type, but uh, an object of uh, inconsistent type is somehow assigned to this variable. You might think now that how it's going to happen, but I will show you the way to do this in Java and Kotlin. Unfortunately, we can't do this. So, yeah, won't compile, will compile uh, with uh, exception, will compile and run, and uh, biohazard. Okay, so uh, let's go to the roots. Let's go to, to the ancient fossilized stuff. Uh, Java arrays first. We can think of Java arrays as a prototype of generics, right? Because if we have person class, we can create an array of persons, like list of persons. So from one type, we can get another type. And uh, if we have uh, an array of person, what is the type of an element of the array? I will open it up for you. It's just person or null. In Java, uh, null is possible everywhere. So that's, that's why I put it here. Person or null, so it's if an array of employee, it's employee or null, and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, then let's try to think. Given that Java array is not empty, what is the result of assigning a value to its element? And uh, uh, so uh, can we assign, say, nulls to persons, employees, or managers? 
I will open it up for you because it's quite trivial. We can, in Java, we can assign nulls everywhere. So null will do, always will do because null can, can mock just any type, right? Okay, now let's try to think what about this part, uh, this part of the table. Can we assign a person as an element of arrays of employee? Or employee as an element of array of manager? Your ideas. Yeah, go quick. And I, I don't expect correct answers for you. I just expect ideas. So please don't hesitate. So we will lose much time. So your ideas. Yes, can we assign person to an employee? Some person might not be employees. Some employees might not be managers, right? Yeah, be mm -hmm. Yes, there will be compile time error, correct? Because, yeah, it's the main uh, meaning of type checking, right? You cannot assign employee to person, uh, uh, sorry, person to employee. Employee to person you can assign, but not vice versa. So there will be compile time error. Okay, okay. So what about this uh, this part of the table? What do you think? Uh, it will compile and run. Any other ideas? Okay. See, exception is also possible. I'm pretty sure you don't know why, but I will show you how why is it so. But. Uh, I will explain it uh, just a couple of minutes later. Uh, but meanwhile, let's try to solve another question. Uh, let's try to, to fill out this table. We're trying to assign a variable uh, of type, say, person to another variable of different type. It's also, it's also array, but uh, elements of array, of array are different. Uh, right, so uh, I already opened up a diagonal. Of course, we can assign variables of the same type. It will compile and run, so no questions here. Uh, what, do you uh, what do you think? Can we assign an array of object to an array of person? Or an array of person to an array of employee? Uh, see, it's from, it's to. It will always be the same throughout the lecture. So. Uh, in the columns it's from, uh, uh, sorry, in rows it's uh, from, in columns it's to. So, is it valid to assign an array of object to an array of person? Yeah, especially with collections, we can't assign the collections. Yeah, yeah, about collections I will, I will talk later, because it's the main point <laughs> of my <laughs> presentation. But let's, let's think about arrays. Arrays, no, right? So, and why? Why cannot we do this? Well, because uh, Persons might not be employees, and we expect employees here, right? Okay, so it won't compile. What about this part of the table? We're not talking about Java arrays, not collections. Ideas? Think yes. yes, because, yeah, sort of, we can... <laughs> employee is still a person, so why not treat array of employee as array of persons? If we are reading values, it's, it will be safe, right? And yes, we can do this in, with Java arrays. And why did they allow us, the language designer, designers allowed us to do this thing? Please imagine an API that uh, requires, for example, uh, an array of persons. And we have an array of managers. Managers are still persons. We want to just conveniently, safely pass a reference to an array of managers as a parameter of a method that requires an array of persons. If such things, if uh, here we will have this, uh, these marks won't compile, then we would have do what? Copy array of managers to an array of persons. It will be just overhead and it will be, uh, would be un very inconvenient. So it was done for, for the sake of convenience of the APIs. And this is the main point of the whole presentation, as you will see very soon. Okay, so we filled out this table, and now let's look at this code. We have an array of managers. Uh, we have an array of persons, and we assigned it from managers. So it will compile and run, as we know. Now we created a new person and assigned it as a first element of an array of persons. 
you see something something wrong happening here because this is still the same object as this one and this one is supposed to be an array of, pers uh, of managers and now we are going to get first element of an array of managers and here uh, here we expect manager and these types are not castable person is not manager so what is going to happen and when your ideas error where in the runtime on which line line one or line two line two okay so uh, your answer is uh, is this one by a hazard like uh, if we expect uh, yeah I understand uh, your reasoning so at this uh, at this point we are going to cast uh, element of array to manager because this variable has type manager and we'll have type cast exception so it would be by a hazard <laughs> but no we will have a restore exception at line one and uh, uh, this is a specific, uh, specific element of Java language design. Uh, arrays, they remember uh, their own type. So uh, they remember their own type in runtime. And this is uh, why they're also called reified. They, there is a term, a new term maybe for some of you, reified. So reified collections, reified generics, reified array. Mm -hmm. So uh, arrays in Java are reified. So uh, at this point, although in compile time we forgot that this is an array of manager, in runtime we still remember that uh, this person's variable in fact is an array of managers. So when we try to assign person here, we will get array store exception. And it's better because we get error earlier. It's still not as good as... Uh, it's better to get an error in compile time, of course, even before we run program. So it's the... Uh, the best um, the best possible outcome here we cannot afford this because we decided to to allow these assignments and uh, so they propose such workaround okay if we cannot do runtime exception if we cannot do compile time exception let's have runtime exception but have it early as an array store exception uh, this is what I meant by uh, uh, sorry 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 uh, this is what I meant by by this uh, exclamation marks sometimes when you assign values to arrays in Java you might get array store exception and actually uh, this uh, this story about Java arrays already shows all the all the problems with we are going to solve we are going to solve problems about assigning uh, some collections or some generic classes to another of classes that uh, just uh, have another parameterization and we are going to solve problems about safety of assigning and getting values and uh, intermediate conclusions about arrays in Java arrays in Java are reified I already explained what it means and arrays in Java are covariant covariant means the following it's better to see just uh, to have a look at this diagram so if person uh, sorry, if employee is a subtype of person, then array of employee is a subtype of array of person. This is what covariancy means. Uh, and uh, you should already notice that we have covariant types. In covariant types, it's safe to read values, but it's unsafe to write values. This is all. So <laughs> it's pretty si simple. Soon you will know about contravariance, and uh, it will be vice versa, and actually you know everything that I want to, 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 to tell you about okay but let's have more examples let's get back to Java and to Kotlin uh, so we have in Java and in Kotlin we have this uh, parameterized like list class and uh, if we are getting element of list of employee we get employee if we're getting list of manager we're getting manager uh, we also have this uh, list with question mark in Java and list with asterisk in Kotlin uh, but uh, yeah uh, uh, well let let me open it up for you uh, don't ask you <laughs> because you don't know that. Uh, it's like uh, we don't mind 
uh, when we're writing this stuff, we're telling compiler we don't mind the actual parameter, type parameter. So it can be any type parameter. So we have this question mark in Java. So uh, the element of the list, when we're getting this element of the list in, in uh, Java, it will be object, since object can be any type in Java. In Kotlin, it will be any with question mark. And there is a mm, very interesting thing, in very interesting feature of Kotlin language, which is called uh, null, uh, null safety. Anybody heard about null safety? Uh, somebody, somebody have. Yeah, of course, uh, uh, because in Java we have this uh, dreadful thing called null pointer exception. When we assign some variable, some null to some variable, null can be assigned uh, just to any variable. And when we access this variable, say, uh, say I don't know, person get something, person do something, it will get null pointer reference, null, null pointer exception in Java. This is why in Kotlin, they separate nullable and non-nullable types. So if type is nullable, we have uh, this question mark here. And this means that if variable has uh, type string with question mark, we can assign a string or we can assign null. If we have a variable type string without question mark, we can assign only non-null value and we'll never have null in for this variable. Uh, so if we have list uh, list star here, it will be any with question mark because we just don't mind uh, don't mind uh, um, this type parameter. It can be nullable or non nullable, really any parameter. Okay, so um, let us try to fill out this table. So we have list in Java or in Kotlin and in Kotlin and uh, uh, we want to add elements to this list so we want to add person to list of person we want to add employee to list employee and so on and so forth well actually it's a tricky question it was intended for already this slide was intended for, for already practicing kotlin developers you are not practicing of kotlin developers so I'll open it up for you <laughs> It was the trap. There is no add method in Kotlin's list, unlike Java list. And it makes a lot of sense when I'm going, when I later I'll be talking about differences between type variants in Java and Kotlin. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, when you are going to watch some lectures or some video, some uh, uh, conference talks of the guys who actually design programming languages, you will always notice that uh, features uh, of programming language, each feature of programming language, it never comes uh, alone. Like, we have uh, uh, better type variants and that's it. It's always interfering with other, with other features of library or other features of language. So it's uh, always, it, it never comes alone. So there is, uh, sorry, a question, no? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Are you okay with that? Yeah, 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 of course, of course, yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, but uh, what why, uh, what is used instead? Yeah, uh, in, in a moment I will show you. So in uh, Kotlin, uh, there is such a feature as um, immutable collections. So all collections in Java are mutable. You can add elements and you can uh, uh, read elements. It quote, in Kotlin, you can have, say, immutable co collection, like immutable, uh, sorry, mutable list, some mutable like array list, fill it out, and then assign it to some list, and starting from this point, it will be immutable. You are losing this add and remove methods, so on. So in Kotlin, you have mutable list instead. And separately, you have list that you can, that is read only. In Java, you also have a mutable list. list yeah, only. but it's the same type. In Java, you have type list, and you never can tell in compile time, is it mutable or immutable. Why? You know this only in runtime. Uh, mm-hmm. And then you, you are using list of, and let me, let me, let me, let me show you. You are using, you mean this one. You have, uh, uh, sorry list of 
uh, I don't know, who bar, and you assign this to some variable, say list strings, list strings, right? And now you have this one, and it will compile, but it will have an exception in runtime. If I run this, it will fail in runtime. In Kotlin, yeah, see, it's an exception. Unlike Kotlin, in Kotlin, if you have uh, this list, uh, this list doesn't have add method at all. Yeah, it, and it makes a lot of sense. Please remember, when I told about uh, uh, arrays, I told that it's safe to read values, but it's unsafe to write values in covariant types. So yeah, let's move on. Uh, what about this part? So, but now it's the same. So mutable list of person with question mark is absolutely has the absolutely same semantics as uh, list of person in Java. So uh, it it will be the same for for both uh, for both Kotlin and Java. So what about this with this part of table? Can we assign employee to uh, not assign but add employee to list of person or manager to list of person? Your ideas. I will be constantly asking you so you won't sleep. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, yeah, you, you, no? Why? Uh, it's list of person. We're adding a person to a list of person. It's not uh, so. This not about assigning list to list. It's about adding element to a list. It's uh, that's okay. Sh sh yeah, we can assign person and we can assign employee because employee is a person and manager is still person, so it's okay. Okay, what about this part of the table? Yeah, because we know why. Because uh, uh, person is not necessarily employee or manager. Uh, well, this might be tricky for you. So uh, this is also no. Uh, yeah, why? Uh, what do you think? Why? Uh, no, 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 no. See, it's not list of object. It's not mutable list of any. It's list of question mark and mutable list of asterisk. This means that it refers to some variable that was created as a list of something. But at this point of time, of compile time, it's all about compile time, we forgot. We don't care. We don't mind. But if we don't care about elements, uh, types of elements of this list, it is unsafe for us to add anything. Because we just don't know. It's a list of question mark. Okay, we're adding manager. It might be list of strings. It might be list of integers. So this is why it, uh, also, we have this uh, add method in this list. It won't compile. It still won't compile. It will be a compilation error. And uh, now, they also, it's also quite an interesting thing because uh, in Java, as you see, in Java you can push nulls everywhere, including this list question mark. Because although the, we don't mind this uh, type of, of, uh, of list, we know that null will do instead of any object, right? So we still can add null to a list of question mark. But it's not so in Kotlin because it's asterisk and here might be nullable or non-nullable type. And this is why we cannot add null. Uh, we cannot add null here. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, let's move on to another table, another quiz. Uh, this is about assigning, assignment. So this was about adding elements. This is about assignment of elements. So we we are assigning from a uh, list of something to list of something. So I already filled out this one because of course we can assign uh, variables of the same type. List of uh, manager can be assigned to list of manager otherwise it <laughs> just won't make sense. Uh, this one is also green because uh, this is the main use case of this question mark and asterisk. Where question mark means we don't mind so we can assign everything to to, to this variable uh, and this one won't compile for the reasons we already figured out because uh, list of person 
it's not list of manager because some persons might not be managers. So it will be a compilation error. What about this type of, uh, uh, what about this corner of the table? What do you think? I think you know. Uh, you already told. Is a person, there is also a person in so? Yes. It will compile. Other, other ideas? It will compile like, uh, mm, you mean like in uh, case of erase. Because in case of erase, we, already, we also have this lower left corner green. But it's not erase, it's, uh, it's generics. So, uh, the, the issue is that uh, later on, it will forget about what... Yeah, 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 doing. exactly, exactly. Yes, yes, y yes, I will, I will tell so you about it. Probably the solution. Yes, yes, exactly. And this is why in generics, it's also red. Unlike uh, erase. In a race, you can do such trick as assigning list of uh, don't know uh, of manager to a list of person. Of course, managers are still persons, so we can assign. But in generics, uh, you cannot. In Java, you cannot. You never can have this uh, low uh, uh, low left corner of table green. And yeah, this is the difference. You might uh, you might experience also, uh, already difficulties with this. So and yeah, uh, intermediate conclusion is that in Java language, generics are invariant. See, when I talk told about uh, co uh, covariant uh, arrays, this corner was green. In Java, uh, generics are invariant. Invariancy means that. We have only green diagonal, and this corner and this corner is red. And uh, as you might expect, when I will talk about contravariancy, this corner would be green. Uh, so, in a Java language, generic types are invariant. That is assignable only to the types of the exactly same type. So, parameterized by the same types. Uh, if it was not so, otherwise, we would have uh, such strange thing. So the same example, like array list of managers, then list of persons. When they adding new person here, and no runtime check is possible. Uh, why? Because uh, unlike arrays, which are reified, uh, generics in Java and Kotlin are type arrays. They don't know exact. Uh, they don't remember in runtime generics don't remember their type parameters unfortunately I will uh, show you uh, why, why it's so uh, okay uh, by the way if we are talking about Kotlin in Kotlin there is no such thing as an uh, uh, array they have special wrapper say array of T uh, so they, they don't have native arrays like we do in Java in Kotlin. So they have special class array of T for, for, for this. And uh, this roper is invariant also. Just, uh, just for you to know. Uh, okay. Uh, this was uh, mutable or possibly mutable lists in Java and mutable lists in Kotlin. But what about this one? This is list this is Kotlin's list, not Java list. And this is Kotlin's language. And uh, if we look at this, boom, we see that this part of the table for Kotlin list in Kotlin language is also green. And you know why it's safe. Because in Kotlin, list is read only. It's safe to read values from list. So we can safely assign list of manager to list of person. We will be only reading values from list of person. And we can safely assume persons as uh, managers as persons, right? Yeah. Uh, does it mean that in Kotlin, in order to add any uh, extra member to a list, you need to create another list and copy everything with a uh, If uh, if you are yes, if you are working with immutable list, yes, of course. Like uh, there is an immutable thing called string in Java. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> If you want to, to, yeah, to create another string, you, you have to create another string. So that's, that's really and convenient, you mean. Uh, you always can work with uh, mutable lists. 
You always can. Nobody forces you. Yes, you can always work with mutable list in Kotlin when you need it. But sometimes you, you just know that, oh, this is the final value. I will never going to mutate it. I will never going to change it. So I'm just assigning it to mutable list and bumps in Kotlin, we get this extra convenience. So in Kotlin, uh, this list type, immutable list type is covariant, unlike most of the generics. And if we, uh, we're going to look uh, at declaration, how it looks like, uh, like uh, how it literally looks like in Java and at Kotlin, you will see that in Java it's just standard generics uh, declaration. You, you know how to declare, I, I hope you know how to declare your own generics in Java. You're just adding this E here in triangle brackets. But in Kotlin, we have not just E, but out E. This is a special Kotlin, Kotlin word, out. And this word means that I want this type to be covariant, but as, as soon as I use this out word here, compiler will not let me uh, make any public method that is going to accept E as a parameter. So it's, uh, this is what Kotlin have, this is what Java don't have. So uh, you declared out E and you can read E in public methods. You can also write E in private methods. You can also have uh, E typed variables as long as they are private, but as soon as you make them public, your class won't compile because Kotlin says you want this class to be covariant in order for it to be safe. You must be only able to read values, not write values. I think this makes sense for you. Uh, okay, uh, you might wonder, some of you might wonder, some of you might already know, but some of you might wonder why runtime check won't do for mutable lists like we do for arrays. Uh, uh, first, we want to avoid uh, runtime exceptions. Of course, still uh, runtime exception workaround is not the best one, right? We want more compile time exceptions, not runtime exceptions. Uh, but second, even if we uh, agreed to these runtime exceptions, uh, the problem is that in Java and Kotlin and generally on Java virtual machines, generics uh, use the thing called type erasure. Uh, and this means that in runtime, uh, the instance of uh, parameterized class doesn't know its type parameters. It only knows their type parameters in compile time, but not in runtime. And uh, why is it so? That's because generics appeared not in the first uh, version of Java language. They appeared in Java version 5. That's 2004 or 2005, quite long ago. But still, uh, Java itself appeared in 1996. So, as you can imagine, lots of code had been already written in Java. So they needed uh, backwards compatibility. So they wanted to design this generic stuff in such a way that all the old Java programs would still run, would still compile and run. So they, <coughs> uh, they chose uh, type erasure as a solution and uh, it has its own merits it allows some flexibility in terms of libraries and so on in terms of interfaces but uh, of course uh, besides flexibility and merits it also has its limitations so uh, some uh, do I have time oh yeah I do have time uh, some slides from my lecture on uh, generics uh, if we have, for example, uh, generic type in Java, and you declare it as a pair of something, let's let's create our own pair of uh, of uh, some type T. So we are declaring type T here, and we are using it here. So it will be just returning it as a type T, and it will be accepting it as a type T. When it gets compiled in runtime, we will have just raw type, so-called raw type. It's just pair. And uh, it uh, stores objects here, and it uh, receives objects and uh, sets objects. But it works in compile time. In compile time, uh, when we are calling this uh, set first or set second, in compile time, 
we know the type parameter of pair and if we are going to assign some, something inappropriate here uh, compile time exception will occur but when we are getting stuff when we are getting stuff compiler will add implicit typecasts so again if it was uh, declared as a pair of managers for example it will use this type erased pair when it compiled it and when it uh, uses get first get first is object it uh, compiler adds uh, implicit type cast to manager because in compile uh, in compile time it knows that it should be cast to manager uh, uh, and it's safe because or somewhat safe because uh, what wrong might happen right we never add uh, we only uh, will add managers here so it can be read as manager unless type pollution happens but, uh, this I will cover a bit later in uh, Java and Kotlin we also have so-called bounded types I think I should uh, uh, just remind you that we can write pair of t extends something and uh, uh, this type is now bounded so it cannot be just any type it should extend uh, uh, employee by the way uh, employee here might be not necessarily class it might be interface and also both in Java and Kotlin uh, we have a very interesting feature called intersection types you can write here extends employee ampersand and blah 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 ampersand and blah 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 so we can uh, limit this T not only to one class or interface but we must uh, we can tell them please be a subclass of employee and be an implementation of this and this interface so uh, uh, that's called the intersection types and of course they uh, have them both in Java and in, in Kotlin so if we have only one type here this type this uh, bound type will be used in compiled class my favorite my favorite question now is if we have an intersection type like employee is something else what's going to be uh, the type here in compiled code what do you think like let me show because yeah intersection types are quite an interesting thing in itself I have a dedicated slide for it yeah it's like this you might not remember or might not know and it's also very important when we talk about genetics uh, for example uh, we have an interface called payable and this interface means that we are paying money to, to this person so uh, uh, we are paying money to employee we are paying money to retire may maybe but not to each but not to visitors for example and if we want uh, to, to gen some, write some generic codes that uh, uh, will show us the name of the person and the amount of, uh, of money we are paying to this person we are asking this generic method to, for this generic type parameters to extend person and payable there is no such type as person and payable in Java there is no such type it's just uh, intersection here so it but this method will be used only for this uh, will compile and run only for this type and this type parameter but not not this type uh, this type parameter so it's quite an interesting thing so let's get back to uh, to the presentation about type variance uh, your ideas if we have intersection types here what what's going to be yeah okay so it will be yeah the people usually are trying to, to figure out but actually the answer is simple it will use the first one in the list <laughs> so if it's yeah if it's payable and employee it will be uh, payable if it's employee and payable it will be employee yeah. so it it does it in the most stupid and, and simple way but if you know about this stupid and simple way you might utilize uh, this knowledge for some lower level performance uh, uh, performance improvements but it's dirty tricks you just you are not allowed to do these tricks 
unless you have <laughs> some years of experience. But uh, you, you, from now on, you know <laughs> about about this. Uh, okay. Yep. Uh, no, they are not called wildcards. This they are called intersection types. We will talk about wildcards very soon. Uh, so, okay, uh, in method calls, as I already, as, as I already uh, shown you, uh, we have uh, type control in, in compile time, so it's safe in comp in runtime to uh, to call these methods because they they were type checked in compile time. Uh, this one uh, is uh, typecast inserted by compiler, has typecast inserted by compiler. Uh, okay, another tricky stuff. Uh, yeah, please uh, have patience for, for five minutes, then will, it will be easier. Uh, in uh, Java virtual machine, so this is applicable, what I'm talking about is applicable both to Java and Kotlin. This is limitation of Java virtual machine, not language. So this is cannot be overcome by Kotlin, better language like but uh, these are limitations of Java virtual machine. Also imagine uh, uh, like this example. Uh, we de defined our pair, already pair, and we want uh, our pair to be a pair of local date and we uh, uh, defining this date interval class that extends pair of local date. And we want to overwrite set second so that if uh, uh, we, we, we can assign, we should allow only assignment of the second element of this pair only if the second date is greater than uh, first date of the, of the first element. So we are overriding this setter here. But if we are compiling this code to row type, types are erased, are being erased. So uh, this data interval extends pair and uh, we have this set second. This set second has local date as a parameter and it actually does not overwrite the set uh, second method of uh, pair, it overloads it. Do you remember the difference between, between overloading and overriding? I hope you do. If we have different parameters, then it's not overriding, it's overloading. So we are calling, uh, calling it uh, and uh, nothing happens unless we have this bridge method here if we are calling set second on the object, so in super type. Uh, so this method is inserted that uh, co e explicitly calls this overloaded method here for, uh, for polymorphism to work on, uh, uh, on the class uh, with generics. So yeah, it's, it's a sort of workaround, right? But yeah, it, it, it is a workaround. And it's implicitly, these bridge methods are uh, implicitly added when we compile generics. And sometimes they will get in our way. Oh, by the way, we, we have the same bridge uh, methods in uh, Kotlin. So again, uh, some folks think that Kotlin can solve every problems with Java. No, it cannot because it still runs on JVM. And uh, this is an example of, uh, of some Lambda in Kotlin, and this is an example of compiled code in Kotlin. It still ha must have a uh, bridge method, although in uh, this scenario, it's never going to be invoked uh, because uh, this is just uh, in place lambda, it will be only used only once, and there's no chance that this uh, bridge will ever be needed, but still JVM creates this bridge method. Uh, and because of bridge methods, we have some strange limitations, uh, like we cannot implement different parameterization of the same interface in one class. Like uh, if we have uh, employees uh, that implements comparable of employee, and then uh, we have manager and extend employee, and we want it to implement a comparable of manager, uh, at this level, there exists a bridge method. At this level, there will it will try to insert another bridge method and will be method clash. So you just cannot write code like this in Java. Uh, please remember, if you are uh, trying to write some generic, uh, utilize some generic classes and you, uh, at some point, you will see compilation error, 
telling you something about bridge method. Please don't be surprised. Just remember that you cannot uh, uh, have different parameterization of the same interface in, in one class. But it's, it's okay. It's just was just uh, some side notes on the theme of uh, generics. Uh, we'll get back to type variance very soon. And it will be easier now for you to understand what's happening. So now you must understand at this point. So there are no parameterized classes in the JVM in runtime. In runtime, we have only regular classes and methods. So JVM doesn't know anything in runtime about generics. They're all row types. Type parameters are replaced with object or with binary type. You already understood this. Bridge methods are also added anytime, every time to preserve polymorphism. And type casts are added as uh, needed. So this uh, leads, all this leads to the main type erasure limitation. And it, it's actual both for Java and for Kotlin. If we are writing such code, if A instance of pair of string, if A is pair of string, it's the same. It, the, the meaning is the same, both in Java and Kotlin. Kotlin is more concise, as you can see. Kotlin is just concise, uh, more concise language. But anyway, the outcome will be the same. What do you think will be the outcome? Oh, we are just checking the type, right? So what wrong can happen here? Can it check type? Can it check it in runtime? No, it cannot check it in runtime. That's why it won't write you such code in compile time. It will be compilation error. Because we don't know the type parameter in the runtime, and you just cannot write such code. Unfortunately, you might want, <laughs> but you never allowed. Neither in Java nor in Kotlin. You just cannot write such code. You will get compile time error. You can. All you can is to write this code. Instance of pair of we don't care what is, is a pair of we don't care what. In this case, it's okay. We know what pair is. In runtime, we perfectly know. We have this type raised row type pair, and we can check for it. But we do, cannot check for, is it a pair of string? Is it a pair of manager? So on, so forth. Is, is a string not a class object in Java? Uh, sorry, this is class object. So it's class, yeah. Uh, so why are you talk about the string? Is it, why, why, why would you compile? String? It, yes, the format slide. Is the same type of pair. Is, go back to the format slide. Ah, for, ah yeah, yes. okay. Why, why? Because string is an object. Yeah, okay. but uh, as, I t uh, as, I, uh, as, I, as I was telling, uh, telling you, uh, in runtime, uh, we know that A is instance of some pair of something, but in runtime we don't know what is it. It might be string, it might be uh, manager, it might be apple, it might be orange, it might be integer. And in runtime, we just lost this information. Uh, run, uh, uh, Java virtual machine just lost this information in runtime. So uh, we, we know that this is instance of pair, but we don't know in runtime, unfortunately, we don't know it, it's pair of what. Yeah, so it, it, this is why, why it's called type erasure. So <laughs> we erased this type parameter, not this. We, we still know that it's pair, but we erased type parameters. So this is why this won't compile, because compile say, hmm, <laughs> runtime will never tell you. So please don't compile code right, right this, but uh, like this. But this will compile and run. And of course, in runtime, we know that it's pair, or it's list, or it's other type. But not we just lost information about, uh, uh, lost imp uh, information about type parameters. Yeah, so please remember. Yes, please remember. Please. Uh, don't be tempted to, to write right like this. You, you might be tempted, but it won't allow you. <laughs> so now you, now you know why, why it won't allow you to write like this. Okay. Uh, and um, because of this, because generics are type erased and uh, arrays are reified in Java, uh, generics and arrays in Java are enemies. 
they are enemies. You cannot mix and match generics and uh, uh, arrays. And uh, when you'll be experienced Java developer, pre pretty, pretty soon you will figure it out. So if you try to write the code like this, it won't compile. It will tell you, you are going to create generic array. Why? That's because Arrays, they want to be reified. They want to know everything about types of their elements. Everything means everything. <laughs> but if I'm going to create an array of list of string here, all it can know in uh, runtime is that it's an array of string of something. So it just cannot be type safe when we're assigning something to, to, to this array. And uh, we can do this. We can fool around. Uh, we can fool around this safety. Like, look at this code. It's Java. It's Kotlin, but it's the same. Semantically, it's the same code. And uh, what's going to be an outcome? So, uh, let's let's try to figure out. Uh, I think more convenient for you is to reason about Java code. So we have pair of integers, like int pair a new pair and first element is 42 integer second element is integer zero now we are having this pair question mark pair or oh, we 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 don't care what and we assigned it int pair to this just pair right now we are creating now we are having this uh, variable type pair of string and we are casti casting this pair to pair of string at this point both Java compiler and Kotlin compiler will tell you you are doing something dangerous, warning, unchecked typecast. But it cannot prohibit you from doing such thing because, uh, well, in some circumstances you might just need to do this because, uh, well, why this pair cannot be a pair of string? It can be a pair of string, we just don't know. So this is also compiled and uh, it's being executed. Now, since it's a string pair, in compiled time it's correct to uh, assign foo as a second element of this pair. And now, we are going to print the product of two elements of uh, int pair. But still, st string pair is still int pair, because it refers to the same object in memory. So what's going to happen here? we are going to have a runtime exception. And at this point of time, we will have a spoiled mutant just object, which is neither pair of integers, no pair of strings, because its first element is integer, second element is string. My congratulations, we, we've done heat pollution. We just fooled around type checking both in Java and in Kotlin. So when they tell you that Kotlin is more type safe, okay, it's more type safe in a way, as way as Scala and other languages, but still you can fool around uh, type checking. This is called heap pollution. So we, we made a mutant object, like, <laughs> I don't know, a creature with a, <laughs> with a head from, of a cat and the tail of a snake or something like this. <clears throat> So when, when it happened exactly? Yeah, in three steps, in three st simple steps. Yeah, now, now I'm going to, to teach you some black magic, how to make yeah. <laughs> a mixed creature. We created element, uh, we created pair of integers here. So now it's 42 and zero. At this step, at this step, we assigned it to a pair of uh, question mark. So we forgot, we forgot uh, this type. And in runtime, uh, it was forgotten at this step. So it just uh, as soon as we created this pair in runtime, we already just, forgot. Just to pick the compiler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We fool around the compiler. We trick the compiler, and uh, in runtime, it cannot do anything because it just doesn't know. All the types are all types. But, but is it at all <laughs> yeah. We did it almost intentionally, but uh, see, it's a simple code. You can uh, do this also by, by mistake. Imagine if it uh, came from another method, this pair of question mark came from another method, and you might be sure that 
Ah, I know it came from another method, but I'm pretty sure that it, this is a pair of managers because uh, for some reason just. Yes, it's bad code, of course. It's bad code and uh, and compiler will warn you, it will issue a warning that you are doing an unchecked typecast. But uh, you see what's the problem. If you are assigning, if you have uh, some variable of type person and you casting and you explicitly casting it to manager like uh, manager M is manager of person. You, you know this ex explicit type in Java. It will also, it will be also unchecked type cast, but in runtime, you will get runtime exception when during the cast. Because in runtime, Java knows mm, this object is not manager. I cannot cast it to manager, so runtime exception. Here, here, you will not get runtime exception on this cast, because this cast is just uh, compile time cast, not runtime cast. Because it's pair, it's already pair, so no need to, I'm casting pair to pair. What, that's, that's what's being done on uh, runtime. And no, uh, no operation. What, uh, what will it, it will, uh, it will uh, when you are going to multiply integer and uh, string, it will, you will get a uh, runtime exception. Like uh, string cannot be cast to integer. Okay, but if we uh, substitute the multiply by, for example, to add to plus, yeah, it will it will do because it will uh, convert to string this and this to string because yeah, overloading. Yeah, but it will print forty two plus four. Yeah. It will uh, print forty two four. Yeah, yeah. Concatenation. Yeah, it will do concatenation because yeah, this is to string, this is to string, and it will yeah figure out that. Yeah, 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 a mutant. <laughs> so, yeah, n never do this at home <laughs> without proper training. So, yeah, another COVID uh, outbreak might occur after such experiments. <laughs> all right. Mm. All right, all right, all right. We have 30 minutes left. And in this 30 minutes, still plenty of uh, things to talk about. What, we, what if we want this? Uh, imagine we have uh, my list. I'm intentionally called it my list so that we don't mix it with a list from uh, Java or Kotlin library. It's just some, some our own implementation of list of managers and employees, and uh, we want to create uh, convenient methods like adult from and adult to. Like uh, we want to be able to add all from managers to list of employees, right? Because managers are employees. And we want to be, to be able to safely add all uh, two employees from list of the managers in this direction. But we don't want this to work in these directions. So how do we achieve this? Uh, there is a naive approach and uh, many just uh, junior developers starting from, from this. They just want to uh, to do such stuff, and they create a class like this. So it's a parameterized class. Uh, it's parameterized here and here, and we have this add all from and add all to. It's pretty straightforward. The implementation is pretty straightforward. But if we are uh, using such class, and we create these variables, and we are going to call these methods, and they make sense, and they should work, in our opinion. They won't work. Why? Why it won't compile? This naive solution won't compile. With what uh, compile time error? We created list of manager managers, and we uh, uh, employ this list of employee, and we are calling adult from my list of E, and this is type E, and this is manager, so this is typed as list of manager. So what's the problem? You already know. You already figured out. No. Employees, uh, sorry, uh, here managers can be assigned to employees. Yeah in this scenario. 
they can be assigned. But a list of employees, uh, sorry, list of managers cannot be assigned to list of employees because here we are passing list due to invariance, right? We have type invariance in Java and because of type invariance we cannot utilize these methods the way we want them to be utilized. See, it's inconvenient. This is what this is about uh, all about conveniency of API. So, because of type invariance, this naive approach won't work. And uh, the same in Kotlin. E just the same. Uh, here we came up to wildcard types. In Java, we can have covariant wildcard wildcard types. What does this mean? We are uh, we are talking that at please add all from we have uh, this um, generic class typed E, but uh, we are talking that uh, telling uh, the compiler that we will accept list of everything that is either E or extends E or a subtype of E. In this scenario, if it's uh, question mark, I don't know what, but it extends E. In this scenario, what's going to happen? Uh, when we are iterating through through these elements, we know that it can safely be cast to E. It can be regarded as E, since its question mark extends E, right? So it, it can be anything, but it extends E. So we can safely uh, think of them as of E and add them to, uh, to our internal state. So this will compile and run. If we uh, declare add all from as a uh, not list of e here but list of question mark extends e please remember if there is one thing that you might remember from this lecture please remember about this question mark extends e, it's the question mark super e because it will immediately be helpful for you uh, in writing java code uh, in kotlin it's uh, it's the same but kotlin is more concise you have out e here right so instead of extends E here, you have out E here. And by the way, what does this out mean? This out means that we are going to get elements out of object, like we are reading. Yeah, so yeah, it, it makes sense. It's not, this out is not about uh, inheritance, but it's about reading. And, uh, uh, we also have uh, the thing in Kotlin that Java doesn't have. In uh, Kotlin, we might declare, for example, my immutable pair that will be always covariant. And if this type is covariant uh, by declaration at declaration side, then we can uh, uh, we. Um, might not bother about use, type, uh, use site uh, covariancy declaration. So if uh, uh, we are talking about uh, immutable pairs, then uh, uh, here this out is not necessary. So this is uh, more convenient, more advanced in Kotlin. Uh, uh, like this, uh, like uh, uh, see, uh, you have uh, add all from overload, and uh, you want not only add all from some a list of out e, but you uh, can add all from some immutable pair, for example. And in this in this scenario, you are not bothering about adding out at this point because this out is already here, is already at declaration side. So. Uh, this is way, way more con uh, convenient, and uh, if you write out here, it will also compile in Kotlin, but uh, IntelliJ IDEA will tell you that this out is redundant because you already defined your in immutable pair of manager as a covariant type. Uh, mm, okay, some quick quiz. Uh, and uh, by the way, this is often asked at job interviews. Uh, what can be done with an object uh, question mark extends in Java? So only two, uh, from now on, it will be only two variants. Either it won't compile or it will compile. So we have do something, my list extends e list. 
And uh, inside this method, I'm getting elements from this list and assigning it to a variable with type E. Is it okay or it won't compile? Okay, okay cool. Of course, it's what I just shown you. What about this? Okay. No, no, it won't compile. You, you are adding values, you are writing values. And see, it's uh, a question mark extends E. So it might be a list, for example, if E is person, it might be uh, my list of manager, right? And we just uh, obtained person here where trying to put, might try to put person to list of manager. Might try or might not try. Just in compile time, we cannot figure out. So it won't compile. Uh, about, what about now? Can we add now yeah. here? Yeah. Always, right, because we're in Java. Yeah. <laughs> So, do yep. you have anything like a difference between the no and the undefined? Undefined and undefined. now? Undefined. It's, uh, JavaScript. it's not JavaScript. In, uh, in Java, you don't have undefined. Oh, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> uh, so, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, we have also uh, unbounded wildcard is in Java. So, when we are talking about full question mark, now you understand that. This is just an unbounded wildcard, and it's, in fact, it, it is bounded to, to the bound of T here. Yep. Uh, what about uh, consumers and Just a moment. Okay. I'll have uh, lots of slide, <laughs> slides about consumers and providers. Yeah, about the specs rules. Yeah, I will tell you about the specs rules. Okay, uh, in Kotlin, uh, just, uh, just try, to <laughs> try to solve this one. Uh, oh, you already know the language to, to the level that you might uh, try to solve this one. It's, uh, uh, all, uh, it's, all, it's, it's the same. It's parameterized method, right? So type parameterized. And it's E and it's out E. So it's covariant. And here's, uh, we ha here we have uh, some question mark. And uh, uh, when we are getting, it will work, of course. Uh, it won't work, just like in Java. Uh, the only difference is here, because uh, in Java you can add null everywhere, and you might see, oh, it's E with uh, question marks, so it's nullable. But in fact, this out spoils everything. It's question mark, it's E question mark nullable, but in Kotlin, non-nullable type is a subtype of nullable. If we have string that uh, nullable string, then non-nullable string is a subtype of nullable, because each non-nullable uh, non string is a nullable string, right? You understand, but null is not a non-nullable string. So this is because of uh, type hierarchy in Kotlin, you just cannot add null here, even, uh, even though we have question mark here. Okay, so, uh, so far uh, we, uh, we have been discussing covariancy. What about contravariancy? Contravariancy is something like vice versa. It's like if we have uh, some, uh, if employee is a subtype of person, then contravariant person is a subtype of contravariant employee. Why do we need this? In what situations? You, I think you already realized that so far when I was talking about covariancy, it was about safety of reading values. But sometimes we need safety for writing values, uh, like uh, predicate. You know what predicate is? Predicate is a functional interface in Java. It takes some object and it returns true or false. And uh, if, uh, for example, we have a predicate that can decide true or false about employees, this means that this predicate is, can be safely, can safely replace a predicate of manager because each manager is employee. Right? So this is where contravariancy works. So when we are consuming elements, we need contravariancy. And in Java, we, we can use contravariancy on uh, use site. So we can have wild contravariant types in Java uh, like this. This is Adol2. So far we've been talking about Adol from, but Adol2 won't work uh, with covariant types. For Adol2, two, we need contravariant types. Like, uh, we are going to have 
list of something which is either of type E or some super type up to object. If we have list of persons, we can safely dump it to list of objects, right? So, or uh, if we have a list of uh, employee, we can safely dump it to list of uh, uh, persons uh, using a doll to method. So this is how what this is what this question mark super e means in Java, and uh, this example will compile and run. In Kotlin, we have word in. So it, it, instead of question mark super, we have just in uh, word, and this means that e is going to accept value inside itself. Uh, but unlike Java. In Kotlin, there is also declaration side uh, contravariance. Like if you are creating some consumer, some something that is going to consume values, you might uh, declare it is not just by simply e. If it's simply e, then it's invariant type. If it's out e, then it's covariant. If it's in, it's contravariant. And uh, from now on, compiler will allow you to create methods that have have uh, e as parameter. But it will disallow you what? What it will disallow you? I think everything is uh, written here, but please try to figure out itself. Uh, figure out it yourself. Uh, it will not allow you to create any methods that will return e as value because it would be unsafe. If class is contravariant, then it's safe to write values, but it's unsafe to read values. Uh, so. Uh, uh, for write-only values, we can just uh, uh, ah, I see. Uh, in this in this example, uh, we created my consumer, like uh, on the previous slide on Kotlin, and we are creating an overload at all two for our my list. We say we're adding another con convenience method that dump that dumps uh, all our elements to some consumer. For each element, we are going to just feed the consumer. And in order for this uh, method to be convenient, uh, we do nothing. Because Kotlin does everything for us. We're just saying, my consumer of E, and we don't bother about this in word here, because uh, my consumer is already defined as contravariant class. So it's, it's really very convenient. And this is what you can do in Kotlin, unlike Java. Okay, mm, quick quiz. Uh, what can be done with an object type question mark super in Java? We have question mark super e list. Uh, we created this e and we're adding this element and we're adding now. Is it okay? For super? I think it's okay. Yeah, okay. Sure, sure, of course. Because it's either my list of E, and it's okay, or it's either some super type including object. It's still okay to add E ID if it, it's a list of objects. Uh, what about getting? No, because we just don't know this type. It uh, might be E some, it might be object, but, but this one is okay. Because uh, it, it's at least object, so we, we still can get it, but we just forgot, forgot the type of it. So we can, still can get elements, but as objects. Uh, in Kotlin, it's quite the same, uh, quite the same, but in Kotlin also, uh, you cannot add nulls uh, here, because why? Because this E is not, has not question mark, because it's not nullable. But here, unlike situation with, uh, without, we can add. Because uh, we know that E is nullable or it's uh, some super type. So uh, all the super types of nullable types should be null. Uh, OK, let's skip uh, Kotlin. We are going to talk about Java. But anyways, uh, you might uh, find this uh, mm, useful uh, so if we have uh, in Kotlin they don't call it unbound wildcard unbounded wildcard they call it a star projection but it's the same 
uh, if uh, it's uh, full of asterisk and uh, full is has this bound, then you can read values as t upper here, but you cannot write anything to to full of asterisk, inclu including now for the reasons I already explained. If uh, foo is a covariant type, then you can read values as t upper and you cannot write them, but not because compiler won't compile you when you try to write, because uh, foo out doesn't have public methods that allow you to write. See, it's even even more convenient. <laughs> it's not like, it's not like uh, I don't know, we have a method, but it won't compile when you invoke such method. The, the worst scenario, if you have a method, it compiles, it runs, and it fails in runtime. The next level of convenience, we have a method where just we can write this method, but it won't compile. It will be just uh, underlined by red, and you just cannot. And the best is uh, when you even don't have a method that that's probably have some, some problems. So uh, in out, you just don't have methods that can write. And uh, uh, here, in in, you even don't have methods that you can read. OK, the famous mnemonic rule for Java. Uh, all Java developers must know this rule. It's called PEX, con producer extends, consumer super. And you already understand where it came from. So. Uh, when you have a producer, so when you are using uh, an object with, which you are going to utilize as a producer, please use question mark extends. If you have an object that you are going to utilize as consumer, uh, uh, use uh, question mark super. Get or add function to your yeah, add all from, add all, add all from, add all to. Like uh, it's about parameterized add uh, and get uh, okay you are just using e or t as a uh, type parameter like uh, uh, see it's in standard libraries you might uh, see declaration like this uh, uh, like it's from collections it's a method from collections uh, class it's static method so you have this collection question mark extends t comparator question mark super t so don't be afraid of this. Now you should perfectly understand what did they mean. They meant the following, that uh, you might use uh, this combination, like you might use comparator of numbers to sort the list of integers, because number is a uh, super type of integer. All the integers are numbers. So if you can compare numbers, of course we can compare integers. So this will compile and run. Uh, or you can uh, sort, uh, you can find maximum of in the list of string using comparator of objects. If we can compare objects, then we can compare strings. Otherwise, otherwise, if it was written like collection of t collection comparator of t comparator, it's the naive approach. You, uh, the only thing that you could use is a list of integer and please put here a comparator of integer. I don't know what is comparator of number. Comparator of, of number is uh, incompatible with comparator of integers. See, this is so. This is the trick. This is uh, uh, this is how wildcard types are used in Java. And this is why they are used for more convenient APIs. In Kotlin, it's simpler. In Kotlin, producer out, consumer in, easier to to remember. And rule of thumb: if you only read values of t. Make it out on declaration side. If you only write values to, of t, make it in on the declaration side. Uh, we have a functional type called function, both in Java and in Kotlin. In function, we have uh, two type parameters, like parameter of argument and parameter of return value. And you might already understand that uh, parameter of function is always contravariant, while the result, uh, result is always co covariant. Because we parameter we only pushing to function, and uh, result we, uh, we always just pulling from function. So uh, in Java, we always, uh, when we are just accepting function as an argument of something, we are always writing like function, question mark, super, question mark, extends. In Kotlin, we don't need to do this, because in Kotlin, we have declaration site variance. It's not just sugar. I have five minutes left and I will show you 
simple example. Uh, I used to participate in a project uh, called uh, Kafka Streams API, and it's really, really difficult to, to create a really convenient API. It's in Java, it's Java library. So in Java, we have uh, a thing called KStream, Kafka Stream. And um, effectively, it's a covariant time. Because if uh, we have a stream of uh, managers, we can still consider it as a stream of persons because if we can, I don't know, if we can process persons, then we can process managers, right? But there is no uh, declaration site uh, variance in Java. So we also have like, uh, it's very complicated library. We, we also have methods like this one. Uh, please uh, provide me a function that uh, converts one key stream to another key stream, for example. And as I told you before, when using function in Java as an argument, you will always, you must do it. So please remember, if you are using function interface, you must always put here question mark stupid, here question mark extent. Otherwise, it just won't work with lambdas, with uh, automatic type inference. So you cannot get rid of these ones. And, uh, uh, but user's code, for example, you have this method that transforms case stream of employee to a case stream of employee. This one is simple. And this transforms, say, case stream of person to a case stream of manager. Sort of, this transform B still transforms case stream of employee to a case stream of employee. Right? Because uh, if we need transformation from employee to employee, this one must fit our requirement. Because it takes persons employees will do as an argument and it returns managers they will do as employee so semantically both are valid but if we want to uh, if we have uh, such an api and if we write code in java like this it won't compile because of type invariance because it says that uh, oh sorry i expect a uh, case stream of employee here and case stream of employee and a case stream of person is not compatible to case stream employee hello type invariance you might say okay let's fix it let's see, fix it like this more question marks so it becomes <laughs> just tricky to to see and understand unfortunately uh java type system doesn't work recursively it doesn't try to, to understand this stuff. It will just break at this point. So it just uh, will tell you that uh, if you are writing like this, then it expands uh, 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 question marks you per case stream person as a type of this function. So it, uh, it doesn't try to figure out type recursively. It only looks at the first, first level. And uh, still, uh, this is not a solution. It just spoils everything. You can try it yourself. Still, it doesn't work. While in Kotlin, it all works smooth. Because in Kotlin, uh, uh, by the way, in Kotlin, they have special literals to describe function. So uh, here, we say that uh, this chain is a function from k stream of E to k stream of E. And as soon as it's Kotlin, it's already understands. Mm -hmm. It's it functions. So this is uh, this should be contravariant. This should be covariant. So it compiles C less code. And what's uh, what's good? Both both these calls will compile. So it's uh, in terms of Kotlin, it's easier to write uh, uh, very convenient APIs. So. Uh, in terms of generics, Kotlin is superior to Java, of course, due to, uh, due to uh, declaration site uh, variants. Okay, uh, let's move on to conclusions. Sorry, I'm running out of time, but only one minute. One minute. Usage of ready-made made generic types is straightforward. You know it and you already use it. But in order to create your own generic classes or methods, you must understand the key principles. In Kotlin, it's even more complicated, so it's absolutely a must to know about these key principles, about the principles that I told you about today. 
and just for you to, to remember, covariance versus contravariance. Covariance is extends, covariance is out, covariance is about reading values, and covariance looks like this on UML diagram. Contravariance is super, it's, a, it's in it Kotlin, it's about writing values, and it looks like this on UML diagrams. And we also have this uh, matrices of what can be assigned to what, so covari covariance looks like this, uh, lower left corner, uh, invariance is just di diagonal, and uh, contravariance is this corner. So this is all, thank you for listening. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.